Now that's a proper Japanese style steak, juicy and tender. When you think of Japanese steak, you probably think of the beautifully marbleized Wagyu. And you would be right, but today, we'll transform a generic cut of beef, applying easy tips and tricks, cooking it to perfection in an ordinary pan, to come closer to achieving the juicy tenderness of Wagyu, topping it off with our delicious homemade Japanese steak sauce. So you'll feel like you're eating from a Japanese steakhouse, so hajimemashou! I'm using the New York strip, as it has a great great cost performance. Other good cheap cuts are the top round, flank, and bottom sirloin. In the United States, there are three grades of beef, select, choice, and prime, signifying the marbleization, hence more tender and juicy, but at greater cost. But with a little care and love, select and choice is sufficient. Now, Wagyu, on the other hand, is a whole nother category above all of that, with its own ranking system. A lot goes into achieving the beautiful marbleization of these magnificent creatures. Each Wagyu cattle is like a thorough bread horse bred to perfection. They live stress-free lives making their meat extra tender and fed the finest diet sourced from all over the world to achieve optimal marbleization. Now those are definitely some tough standards to clear for a generic cut of meat but we can narrow the gap by focusing on three things. One, increase the water retention properties of the meat to hold as much of those meaty juices as possible. Two, massaging the meat to make it as tender as possible. And three, cooking the meat as fast as as possible to achieve our desired doneness as applying heat for a longer period of time will make the meat firmer. We'll begin by seasoning the meat with salt. Add 0.8% weight of the meat for the salt. Apply evenly on one side. Flip it over and do the same for the other side. The salt changes the protein properties, making it less prone to stretching, shrinking, or twisting, hence greatly increasing water retention. Now leave it alone for at least one hour for the effect to work. You'll notice the juices rising to the surface, but leave it alone as it will get absorbed back into the meat. Once it's been over an hour and the surface is dry like this, put it into a Ziploc bag as it will start massaging. Use your fingers to apply as much pressure as possible without tearing the meat. And you can use a blunt object for assistance. Just like how getting a nice massage makes your muscles more limber and relaxed, it does the same for our meat. Avoid using sharp meat tenderizers. Even though they do make the meat more tender, they create tears and punctures that causes the juices to escape from the meat while we cook it. You know, if you think about it, a Wagyu cattle has the perfect perfect life. You know, they're just roaming around on the fields all day, just getting fed the best foods, getting massages sometimes, and of course, only breeding with other beautiful Wagyu cattle. Like, yeah, I guess you'll be eaten, so your life might be short, but it does raise like an interesting philosophical question. Is it better to live a predetermined life, but full of joy and happiness and no struggle? Or live a long, miserable life, but I guess you do have a shot at making something out of yourself? Huh. Massage for at least 5 minutes, let it get back to its original shape, and leave it alone until it reaches room temperature. While we wait, let's just make the sauce now so we don't have to rush it later. Cut an onion in half, then into a quarter, get a bowl and a grater, then grate away. That is where I wish I had a food processor, cause it's so exhausting. <sighs> that is definitely my workout for the day. This should be good enough. Now get one clove of garlic and do the same. Pour one and a half tablespoon of soy sauce, one and a half tablespoon of meat, and also one and a half tablespoon of whiskey. To make it extra Japanese, I recommend the Yamazaki 18 or the Hibiki 21. But if I could afford Japanese whiskey, I wouldn't have even bothered making this video. I would have just used Wagyu, the real thing instead, so. I'm using this more affordable bottle called Monkey Shoulder. It's like a $35, $40 bottle. It's good and uh, yeah, it's still whiskey, so let's pour it in, actually. <sighs> add a dash of ajinomoto to add umami to our sauce, then stir it up. All right, we'll heat it up now, so get a stove and a pan. Set to low medium heat, then pour our sauce in. Add about 15 grams of butter, then let it melt as you stir. Then keep on stirring for just a few minutes until it looks kind of like this. But let's do a taste test to make sure it's ready. Mm. Oh, it's it. We'll finally cook the steak, so get a new pan and set it to high heat. Try to aim for about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, as it will give us nice sear marks while still cooking the meat. Squirt some oil onto the pan, then gently place the meat to start cooking. This is the quickest part of the whole recipe. Flip it over every 20 seconds to cook evenly while giving appetizing sear marks. Because we carefully prep the meat, the juices are not spilling. As for the cooking time, it depends on your desired doneness. With the internal meat temperature shown on screen, I'm aiming 
looking for somewhere between medium rare and medium, but you do you. As a general reference point, it took me about 3 minutes to reach my desired temperature with this 1 inch thick meat. It's done now so put it aside and wrap it in a double layer of aluminum foil while it still continues cooking and allowing the juices to settle evenly throughout the meat. For best results, leave it alone for 5 minutes. While we wait, I'm gonna heat up my hot plate, but you can use any ordinary plate. I also prepare some random veggies I like with my steak, but again, you can use whatever you want. Let's unwrap the meaty present. Ooh, look at that. I just wanna shove that meat down my throat right now. But patience. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-cut the meat, cause us Japanese are sophisticated creatures who like to use chopsticks when eating steak. Not like a bunch of savages using knives to cut up the meat from the same plate that we eat from. Who will you choose to be? Oh, look how juicy that thing looks. Now gently place the meat onto your plate, then pour a sauce from before in your desired amount. And... Kanseishita! It's so soft and juicy. Now it's definitely not as like juicy and soft as a real Wagyu, but this, it comes pretty close. I probably won't be able to go to a nice steakhouse anytime soon, but I feel completely fine just making this. You know, there's gonna be some tough times ahead. I'm sure you guys have noticed the inflation, the economy, we are heading into a recession, but that doesn't mean you can't have good steak and you don't need to go to a good steakhouse or buy expensive cut of meat. So um, yeah, I hope you guys are able to make this and just enjoy the loveliness of a Japanese style steak without using Wagyu. A different friend is over, so I don't really have a whole lot to say right now, so I gotta get going, but uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.